when Katrina happened, uh, I got this phone call from the punk band I was in before. He goes, dude, your town's fucked. I was like, what? He goes, put on the TV, man. The one was underwater. I was like, what? My friend John Boutte always makes a careful delineation. Instead of saying before the storm or after the storm, which is what most people in New Orleans refer to, he says before the levees failed, after the levees failed, because that makes it clear that it's, it was a man-made disaster. I always like to say since the levees failed, because actually <laughs> Hurricane Katrina, it, it sort of veered more east of, of the city. Uh, you know, it was a clear sunny day when the waters came back in on, on the 30th. The 30th of August is when the, the flood waters came in because of our uh, faulty levee construction. What a lot of people f who are not from New Orleans don't understand is that the Mississippi levee if that Mississippi levee ever, ever broke, we'd all, I mean, there was no coming back from that. There would be no more Baton Rouge, which is 75 miles north of here. The whole South Louisiana would be gone. The areas of town that flooded are low-lying areas, um, not just, you know, not just the Lower Ninth Ward, which used to be Back Marsh. It was drained to put low-income housing. Also, you know, areas like the Broadmoor, which was the Broadmoor Lake, and they drained it. It wasn't that, you know, a hurricane came over and swept the whole city away. It was that the Army Corps of Engineers did a poor job protecting the city from a disaster that could obviously have happened any day. Everybody knew that if a, if a major storm came through, then the city would flood because the levees weren't strong enough. And New Orleans is like a bowl you know, so it, it'll just fill up. And this little house right here, this is one of our family houses where my um, aunts decided to stay and have a hurricane party, and which a lot of people did, and because they always threaten us, but, but nothing ever happens. You know, before Katrina, I mean, hurricanes were so much fun. As growing up here, it's like school shuts down and then there's this big storm and it kind of, it always brought the community together, you know, it's like, it was this fun thing, and then all your friends would come over, and you'd you know just make drinks and ride out the storm and lose your electricity. But then you you know you decorate candles everywhere and you know play cards and and it was always a really fun thing. And then when Katrina hit, you know it was just this whole new realization of how how serious it could be. And nobody you know at least in my generation, I had never experienced anything like that. When the mayor Ray Nagan made an announcement that said, if you're gonna stay in New Orleans, you should take a permanent marker and write your social security number on your arm so that we know how to identify your body when we find you. So <laughs> at that point I said, okay, I'm going. <laughs> I evacuated with all my family, so it actually was a great time. We went to Hattiesburg, Mississippi by my uncle's house. He had a huge house with a pool inside the house a church inside the house, an exercise room inside the house, you get lost in the hallways. It was, and it was all my family. It was awesome. The only part when the reality hit in, when my sister's um, boyfriend sent her a text, he was a police officer, and he said, I had to pull um, bodies out the water, including babies, and my life would never be the same. At this time, we had no idea the city was flooded. So it was truly a bam to the heart. It was a, wait, what? That's what's going on. We didn't, I didn't know that was going on. The media reports were so mixed. They, they went into a frenzy. They realized that they got to the point where everyone in America wanted to know about it and was glued to their TV. And so then they just amped it up. I soon stopped watching the TV and started listening to my friends more to, to get the real story. We went to Houston. Uh, uh, my wife and I, took a few things that we could fit into the small car that we had and, and we didn't know that we would be away for six weeks. And uh, we thought it would be a few days, we'd come back in, and, but it, it was worse.
When we did come back, uh, of course, we uh, were shocked at what we saw. Uh, Eighty percent of the city was, look, it looked like a, a bomb had been dropped. The stench was so strong that we had to wear gas masks to go in and be able to try to salvage what we could, which was very little. Okay, so Rita came in after Katrina. So Katrina comes in, everything breaks to shit when the levee breaks and waters are rising. And then like not even a month later, Rita, Hurricane Rita comes through and blows all these houses around like table hockey. That's what happened in the Ninth Ward. I was looking at it. I was like, there's no way wind did this. Those houses were floating and wind hit them because they didn't have foundations, because they weren't built right, because they weren't built for rich people. It really was something, you know, it really was something else. I mean, after we came back down here, you know, to check things out like about three weeks after, and it was a disaster. It was crazy. The streets still had were, the freeway coming in, the overpasses and everything were full of garbage, and you could tell people had been living on the freeway for a while, and it was fucked up. I mean, that was really disturbing. Uh, I was just, my jaw was dropped the entire, I've never seen a city like that. I've never seen anything like that in a movie. Uh, the, I remembered some of where the streets used to be, but now there's houses on the streets, and a house on a house, and a car on a house, and a house on a car. A barge, a barge, a three-story on-end boat that was ordered off the river, sitting in the middle of the Ninth Ward. I'm like, how did that not get, like, wh why didn't they light it on fire before they sent it over the levee? Like, what is this? An entire kitchen. Like, the side of the house is just ripped off, and everything in the kitchen is in perfect place, except the cabinet door is open, and you can see that there's some broken dishes. But the table and chairs are still there. The, the stove and the fridge, are, and you're looking at it like a dollhouse. It was just disgusting and really frightening. We were really uh, very, very sad uh, to see just see the neighborhood, you know, the, our block and the neighboring blocks. I mean, it was it was it was hard to to uh, to look at it and to to see it. Some trees haven't even grown back yet, still. You know, it's like, wow, I can't believe it. It looks like this. Um, the streets were so bare. All these X's and crosses on houses, you try to figure out who was left, who stayed. You know, it was, it was like walking inside of an open cemetery. That's exactly what it was like. Oh, wow, man, that was wild. Ooh, especially to go, you know, like schools and see. It was, it was, it was something for the eyes. Yeah, it was, it was emergency time. I had a friend who uh, had like a, a dually pickup truck, just a huge pickup truck, and went to Walmart and got all the water and toilet paper and vitamins she could fit into this thing and drove from Austin. And as soon as she got to Canal Street, she stopped because Canal never flooded. And in five minutes, her whole truck was empty. Turned around, did it again. Turned around, did it again. They also tried to send in these uh, trucks full of drinking water. And the National Guard said, we can't allow you to bring this many trucks in. Turn around, turn around. It's backwards, it's stupid. There's people in trouble. And then we, we did nothing for like a year. We had chainsaws and a couple bulldozers. We should have had cranes. We should have been able to like, like assess all the, we should have had tanks. We should have had huge like dump trucks full of people. Like, where's your address? We're gonna find the number on the house. You go in there and get anything you need. We're gonna take it back to the Marriott. Not the Superdome, the, give them a bathroom. Like, are you crazy? We really didn't do very much. I think it's, it's pretty embarrassing, you know? I don't know if it's more the city government or the federal government or both, but I mean, people died just waiting for help, you know? 
It's like, what kind of a government will leave their own people sitting out in 100 degree August heat without food, without water? I mean, that's like, that's embarrassing, you know? There's natural disasters in other parts of the world and the U.S. will provide aid within 24 hours, but in, in the city of New Orleans, there was nothing, you know? I mean, that's just, that's crazy. Being at the bottom of the map, like, it couldn't have been any other city they would have did that to. It wouldn't have been any other city that would take so long to get rebuilt by now. It's way too long to have so many abandoned houses and buildings in an American city. It's sad to me. There's a lot of anger towards the government, you know, and a lot of anger towards the city government and the national government about it that still remains and definitely was very, very strong after the storm. A lot of citizens were really upset about it, but. There's so much speculation and it's very, very hard to get the facts, even today. I mean, certainly the, the governmental group that, was, that had oversight on the maintenance of it was the Army Corps of Engineers, you know, and there have been multiple lawsuits that have been filed. Um, but I, I don't think anybody, you know, that's like saying from the BP oil spill, if someone's going to jail, no one's going to jail. Unfortunately, that doesn't really happen. It's very hard to prove you know, where money goes and whose actual fault it was. And then after the storm, after the levees failed, I uh, was just so convinced that this is where I needed to be. I wanted to come back here and be a part of rebuilding and be a part of life here, you know? And I think a lot of people felt that, that sinking feeling of like, oh no, we're not, that's not gonna happen. We can't lose, we can't lose all that, you know? It's too important, you know? And I just, it was just a really natural feeling. It wasn't something that I had to sit and think about. It was like, all right, as soon as it's safe and logical for me to go live there, I'm, I'm there. Is everybody having a good time? Beautiful. All of that's about to change. Here's my Katrina song. It is called Teeth. <laughs> How many bodies does it take to build a dam? When the cops decide to count their heads, they'll find out where I am. I'm at the bottom of a city, wishing I had made a plan. My home is gone, my heaven's out of reach. My brothers ain't breathing, neither am I. My cousin's on the rooftop, too desperate to cry She's only 17 with a newborn and she don't wonder why She knows somebody has been lying through their teeth I hope my baby's mama sister gets my kid to Baton Rouge Hope my baby doesn't see me floating around on evening news Hope the scenes get here with time to spare Cause everyone just stops to stare I doubt they're marching anywhere The Delta's dug too deep I'm a kid and was allowed because they outlawed desire when the dead come back to life again, they're coming from the mire, holding picket signs and shouting, someone needs to get fired. Somebody that's been lying through their Some sunburns overnight and gets praised for throwing rocks. I hope this show gets overthrown by widows, thugs, and cops. I hope we take the dead's advice, dry our eyes with beans and rice. With everybody dying twice a lifetime full of grief. Whoa, wouldn't it be nice to have a swamp in every town? It wouldn't be so shocking when your neighbors up and drown. Hand grenades and hurricanes, 
I believe to think somebody has been lying through the tears.